Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a pheasant tail nymph made popular by Jim Teeny. He used only one material, the fibers from a pheasant's tail, but I'm going to do mine a little different and we'll get to that here shortly. So we're going to put a size 14 fulling mill hook in the vise. Um, one point here I want to make, see that little line on the knob that I'm adjusting it with? That helps me to set the gap between the vise jaws and make it e exact each time. So I tighten it up and I back it off about a quarter turn and then use the lever to tighten the hook in the vise. Here we're going to start some ADOT black uni thread behind the eye of the hook and wrap our way back to the bend. Now we want to have a layer of thread underneath because we're going to use pheasant tail fibers for our tail on this fly. I found that wrapping pheasant tail fibers directly to a metal hook without the thread layer um, encourages them to break off. They wear out and fall off sooner. So I'll go ahead and get these pheasant tail fibers pinned down with a couple of wraps. Double check the length. It's about the shank, shank length. And here's one of the differences. I'm going to use that Jameson's, I think that's a color called Oyster. Um, it's the closest thing you can find to a modern yarn that is um, similar to what Frank Sawyer used to use to make killer bugs. So it imitates uh, a lot of different insects. It, it's kind of a buggy color. It's, it's fuzzy and um, it works out great for the back half of this fly. So we have those tied down. We stop somewhere around the center of the hook shank. Get a couple of whips in there. And we'll use the bobbin cradle. And I'm going to use the rotary feature of this vise to, to wrap the yarn here. I have the camera a little close to the, the vise today. And I hadn't done this for a while. And I think I set up a little close. So I kind of cheated myself out of some room. So. Um, You'll see me bump the camera and, and fiddle with things a little more than usual. But um, all in all, we got the fly tied and we'll be able to demonstrate what we are what we set out to do today. So we'll get a couple of wraps on that yarn to hold it down. So you can see the abdomen is um, has a little variation in the color there. It looks a little bit segmented looks a little darker when it's wet and like I said it imitates um, several different bugs. Here's the other material that I'm adding in so I'm going to do a little piece of flash and uh, so I guess very similar to say a flashback pheasant tail or something and uh, so we'll wrap that in place tie it in and work our way back. Now the next item that we're going to add in are a bundle of pheasant tails. We want to—I I think there are about ten fibers there. I didn't exactly count them, but I want to tie them just behind the eye. Keep in mind, if you want to change the direction of fibers, you need a little room to do that. You can't wrap in the same place and expect to change the direction. I put a couple of wraps in front so that I could um, prop those out of the, keep them out of the way of the hook eye. So we'll wrap back to where we uh, want to end the thorax, and we'll start wrapping the pheasant tail. And again, with the cam if the camera wasn't so close, I probably would have used the rotary feature again. But getting in there with a whip or half hitch or something was kind of awkward, so we just went ahead and wrapped the fibers and pinned each wrap down with my finger. And I kind of sneak in there and drop the bobbin over top and get a thread wrap to hold those in place and a couple more wraps, one in front and I'll be able to snip out those butts. So here we are a la Jim Teeny. We're going to fold those fibers back. They're a little longer than legs might be on a uh, typical pheasant tail nymph, but uh, I, that's by design. That's that's kind of how Jim does it. And again, it it could look like a shuck. It could look like um, you know, wings that didn't quite form. Uh, it's buggy, and the fish like it. So we'll get those pinned back and in place. This fly will have a little larger head than some other flies do. 
Um, we'll get a wrap or two around the flash to hold that in place. And um, I think we lost a couple of wraps there in, in our editing department. But here we folded the uh, flash back and wrapped over it. We'll come back with the whip fan. It's like a ghost is moving around my um, bobbin cradle there, but that's me bumping into it, reaching in between the camera and the and the vise. So here we'll get five or six wraps on the uh, whip finish. Pull it tight. And then uh, we'll snip off the excess thread and snip off the excess flash. So, and it, I kind of mentioned it before, but this is kind of a guide fly. You can, once you're set up, you could whip these out in just a couple minutes a piece. You can fill a box with them in different sizes with slightly different colors. And they're buggy, they work, um, fish like them. And uh, you can get wild here too. You could do some, some pink on here. Um, I know rainbow trout and pink are kind of a, go hand in hand. So um, whatever, you know, whatever you want to match or however you want to fish these. But quick little guide fly, a couple minutes a piece, only a couple of materials. Uh, I probably made it look harder than it really is. I used a little UV resin, but you could have just used head cement on the top. And you kind of have a flashback version of Jim Teeny's Nymph with a um, uh, oyster-covered, colored abdomen. So I hope you make some of these, fill your box up, and uh, catch a bunch of fish. So thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about me, uh, look me up on Amazon. And I'll see you next time. Be safe.